Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I will serve as your host for today. I do have a few points of logistics uh, before we get started. Today's short presentation is being recorded, so look for an email shortly after this recording and you'll find a link uh, where you can watch the session on demand. Please feel free to share this with others in your organization. And we've actually heard a number of people who will use these as, uh, let's call them a lunch and learn. Uh, perhaps you get all in a conference room over lunch and watch the material, an opportunity for you to, to talk, discuss what this might mean for your company. So please do share this within your organizations. Due to the short nature of our webinar, we are not gonna be fielding questions. However, if you do have questions, I know that the presenters will uh, share their email addresses at the end of the presentation today. So feel free to contact them directly. And finally, this webinar is a lead up to the TWI and Toyota Kata Summit, which takes place June 11th and 12th and 13th in Malmo, Sweden. Uh, if you don't know Malmo, it is about 20 minutes uh, by train ride from Copenhagen, just across the water. Beautiful city. Um, we uh, ask that you please do consider joining us for this conference as it's really a wonderful opportunity to meet uh, some of the top thought leaders in both TWI and Toyota Kata. And uniquely this event uh, provides uh, expertise in the integration of both TWI and Kata. You can look more for more information about that conference, uh, again, coming up in June. Uh, you can visit TWI and katasummit.eu. Uh, following the webinar, we'll also share a link uh, to that website. So with that said, let me introduce our presenters for today. We're fortunate to have two presenters with us. Joachim Bustrom, who is a partner and senior consultant at Business Through People, and Frederick Fielsted, uh, who is associate a senior consultant at Business Through People. So for now, uh, Frederick, I think I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, good. Thank you, Dwayne. So, uh, hi and, and um, welcome everyone to this, uh, uh, oops, sorry, to this webinar about uh, strategy execution. Uh, my name is uh, Fredrik Fjellstedt. Uh, I think you pronounced my last name great, Dwayne, so thank you. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, I'm a senior consultant uh, working a lot with uh, strategy execution uh, coming from a background at uh, Toyota where I have been working with uh, Hoshin Kandri for, for a number of years both in the organization but also had the um, uh, opportunity to be trained in Japan by uh, Japanese and Toyota experts on, on the subject so, so that's Great, and I'm very happy to share some of my insights, experience, and uh, to you guys here today. So, the title for this uh, seminar is uh, Do You Struggle with Strategy Execution? And in fact, do your people actually care about strategy? Uh, I think these are two quite valid questions, and I think this is also something that many leaders. Uh, in, in all types of organization can recognize because strategy execution is uh, not always so simple. And uh, once you start to, to execute your strategy, how do you get your people involved? And how do you get people in, in uh, the operation to actually uh, integrate and have the strategy uh, in their mind when they do their daily work? Uh, and this is something I recognize from many, many types of organization in my role as a, uh, as a consultant that, that I often meet leaders with, the, with this uh, challenge. So I'm, I'm very happy to, to speak about this. And uh, you, Joachim, will follow up uh, on this uh, combining um, the Hoshin Kandri thinking with, with Toyota Kata. So, so that's quite, quite uh, exciting. Um, so how do we start about this uh, topic uh, i 
want to show you this picture, which I like very much. So what is really strategy execution? Yeah, for me, it's about choices and to understand what choices should we do as an organization. I mean, we seldom uh, lack um, uh, the, the possibility to choose different ladders to climb. I mean, the, the number of ladders or choices are endless. The trick is as an organization, as a management team and as leaders and team members to understand which ladder should we climb and how do we get all the people to climb the same ladder re leading to the vision we see for the company and, and making sure that all our efforts are, are going in that direction. And this is, I think, where, where the big challenge is. And, and first you need to choose the ladder and then you need to get people to climb this ladder. And, and to climb the ladder is very much the strategy execution, I would say. Um, Frederick, can I, yes? can I interrupt for just one moment? Um, are you in PowerPoint or in uh, uh, presentation mode by any chance? Yes. Um, for Not some really. reason, I... I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing the uh, slides on the left and uh, uh, so forth. perhaps you have two screens up. No, I don't have that. I ha so do you see the presentation slide now? Um, no, I I can still see the slides on the left and then uh, and then your slide to the right. Okay. Sorry so, this. yeah, it, it's it's okay. Uh, wh what you might consider doing is uh, perhaps uh, reduce the size of the notes at the bottom and maybe the uh, animation yeah. tab to the right. Yeah. Is that possible to do? Absolutely. Uh, do it like that. There uh, we go. Uh, No, that's and that would give us just a little more, uh, just a little more uh, view of the the PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah, of course. I like that. That that's better. Yeah. Perhaps like that, Sam. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Let's just go with that for us. <laughs> okay, sorry for that, uh, but uh, thank you, Dwayne, for for noticing that. Yeah. Thank um, you. I don't. I don't know how much you saw of of, of the picture before then, but uh, this is my view of of strategy execution about making the choices, choosing the ladder, ladder, and and so on. And um, th there are some challenges uh, that we often see is that top management might have a very clear view on what is our vision and and how should we uh, achieve that. But the problem comes then when the rest of the organization should be involved in this. And I have met many, many middle managers who can't really explain what is the company strategy. And if they can't really explain it, people will not feel committed or, or engaged in the strategy, which often lead to that the strategy only becomes something for, for a few in the organization. And what we want to accomplish is of course a situation where everyone in the organization feel committed they understand the role they they have the clarity and there is a consensus around what do we want to achieve and how do we achieve it and this is what what we want to talk about with the basis in Hoshin Kandri which is uh, the the management system in lean and <clears throat> To start, I just want to mention something about the lean philosophy. You can define and talk about what lean is from so many different uh, perspectives and, and in many different ways. This is something I picked up working at Toyota and something I often come back to. And, and for me, this is a bit of the essence of lean. So everything is about creating competitiveness. Everything is about to create stable and sustainable competitiveness. And why is this important? 
because if we can ensure and if we can have a sustainable competitiveness uh, everyone the company has a relationship with team members uh, leaders customers suppliers the society the banks everyone can rely and are willing to invest and devote to a company that we feel they will be here for a long time and this is actually the the way Toyota and uh, the way I have embraced what Lean is all about. And then you can think about how do we achieve competitiveness? Either you increase the output or you increase the resources. And of course, we don't want to add resources to, to, to create more output. We just want to, to, to make sure that we create more output with, this, with the resources we have. And here we talk about the output is the result of our job. And this is quite interesting because this says something about what Lean is really about. It's to involve all team members, all leaders to understand how can I create more output in terms of quality, quantity, uh, better relationships, etc., etc., tomorrow than I do today. And this is very much where all the, the typical lean methods then will, will support us with value stream map, map, mapping, reduce waste, etc. etc. And you do that with your normal work and by adding value with the Kaizen mindset. And that means uh, at the bottom line that every team member and leader should challenge themselves and the organization to accomplish more and solving the problems. So this is really the essence, from my perspective, what, what Lean is all about and where Hoshin Kandri uh, help us to do the, the bigger steps. So I hope that, that that makes sense. So normally we, we often talk about the continuous improvements. We talk about the, the Kaizen or the, the improvement that we do on the daily basis, often in what teams or individual team members uh, contribute with but what what quite uh, often is the situation that a continuous improvement like we see on on this uh, line is not very steep so it's very much small improvements that over time will will create a better and better situation but what we often see is that our vision or, or the true north or what we want to achieve as a company lies much uh, higher up from what continuous improvements uh, can, can uh, actually accomplish. And then we need to break this line. We need to create a big change. Uh, this is often what we refer to as step change or a breakthrough to establish a new level that we can do continuous improvement from and, and of course this is something we need to do over and over again of course so th this is just a, uh, an idea of, of, of how Hoshin and continuous improvement work side by side so the step changes and the breakthrough is very much what we accomplish with Hoshin Kandri the strategy implementation and the continuous improvement is very much what we do in the daily management. So this is how, <clears throat> how I would like to describe the relationship between continuous improvement and Hoshin Kandri. So Hoshin will help us to do bigger steps. So what is then Hoshin Kandri? Uh, Hoshin Kandri is, is uh, Japanese and uh, Hoshin means needle or direction, uh, while canary means management, administration or, or something similar. But for me, Hoshin Kanri is about setting the direction. So Hoshin is about defining and prioritize your mid and long term goals. So where do we need to, to be over time? But it's also how do we break down these prioritized mid to long term goals into annual targets and how can we involve all levels in the organization to clarify the objectives and strategies we need to to 
carry out to, to meet those targets. So the Hoshin part is very much setting the direction. And I would say, generally speaking, this is where most of strategy work are done in somehow setting a plan. What makes Hoshin Kanji so powerful is that it also emphasizes a lot on the Kanji part. And that's actually to achieving the breakthroughs. This is the execution part, more or less. So here is where we create problem solving strategies and action plans. So not only implementing uh, a classic waterfall uh, project plan, but also really think about what are the problems that we need to solve and how do we do that? And we constantly implement these plans and we evaluate results and the process and we take the appropriate steps. And as you can see here, the country part is very much running the PDCA cycle. So plan, do, check, act. And we do that on, on a continuous basis. And this is the strength of Hoshin Kandri to combine both the direction with the achievement of, of, of the breakthroughs. And it's an organizational system, uh, which I think it's important. It's, uh, it's, uh, we sometimes refer to it as a management system, but it's something that should influence and be part of the whole. So it's setting the mid to long term management plan and here what we call the annual Hoshin. So when we say annual Hoshin, we refer to it as the annual plan, basically. And here what we will get great support is to prioritize activities and resources. Every organization has uh, a limited setup of, of resources and we really need to make sure that we use them in a, in a wise way. So the prioritization is very, very important when we work with Hoshin Kandri to learn what should we do and what should we not do. And everything is based on tradi traditional lean thinking, or based on facts, uh, course analysis, uh, uh, Gemba, etc. But it also helps us to perform these checks and follow-ups that are made during the implementation of Hoshin. So we turn the PDCA cycle throughout the year. We are not only checking end of year to see how well did we do. This is a, a something that happens throughout the whole year. And perhaps I would say that the most important part is that it's involving members from top to bottom. So all the way from top management down to uh, team level or sometimes also uh, to individual level and helping everyone to clarify what are the targets and activities of each position. And by doing so, you will align the, uh, the, the efforts done in the department and by individuals with the corporate vision. And this is how we make sure that everyone climbs the same ladder. Uh, so when you have Hoshin Kandri in, in your organization, you will have an, a system that will help you with all of this. And so what, what, what is Hoshin Kandri if we look at it in, in more detail? Uh, Hoshin Kandri is a number of components and, and uh, I like to describe it like this, that first of all, it helps us to think about what is our vision? And this is what we refer to as the true north. This is the guiding beacon that everything we do should strive towards. Every step change, every breakthrough we do should help us to get closer to the true north. So this is, this is absolutely key working with Hoshin Kandri and working with Lean in general, of course. And then it helps us to understand where do we need to be midterm? So if our true north is far into the future, what is the more mid to long-term objectives? And those are breakthrough objectives. 
So here we are aiming for uh, objectives that, that are more than just incremental improvements. Here we are looking for the big steps. What do we need to do to get better competitiveness or remain in this, uh, this position when, when, uh, when our competitors are getting more better and better, for example. So this is really where management uh, challenge themselves and challenge the organization to, to set uh, tough targets. And then it helps us to understand where do we need to be this year? And this is sometimes referred to as a challenge or, or something we need to do a bit more short term. So uh, what do we need to accomplish this year? And as always, it helps us also to, to understand where are we now? What is the current situation? And when we know the current situation and we know our challenge, we need to, to think about how we get there. And this will be the problem solving part. So even though we talk about uh, strategic challenges or breakthrough objectives, it's still about problem solving. It's still about understand why do we have the problem and what could be the best countermeasure. And then it helps us to understand if we are getting there. So the KPI is a, a, a key component, but it's not only the traditional target breakdown. It's about also setting the, the, the correct KPIs, but also have the process follow up. How do we learn from uh, what we are doing well and our mistakes? So working with Hoshin Kandri is to address everything you see on the right side here and find a system how we do that in, in a good way. Uh, and you can also see that, that it's some kind of line here between the two top uh, uh, true north and breakthrough objectives and, and the rest. And, and this is a bit of an interface where top management thinking meets the organizational efforts. So of course the true north and the breakthrough objectives is very much what's coming from the top saying this is the direction, this is what we want to achieve as an organization. And then top management challenge or ask the organization to say, what can you do to help us achieve this? And that will be the organizational efforts, the bottom up. And this, this will meet and, and this will be on a regular basis. <clears throat> and just to say something about the importance of True North. Uh, if you stand in your current situation, like I said in the beginning, you, you very seldom have lack of choices. You can go many, many different directions. Only the, the, your imagination will actually be the limit here. So the, the question is, of course, how do you know or how do you decide what what is the best way to walk or or what is the best way to pursue and if you don't have the the vision or the true north you don't really know what is the best way but if you have this you know the guiding beacon you get some kind of corridor of of where you should stand uh, or or where you should act in between so you know if you are going in this in, in the right direction, even though this way is not straightforward, but you will always know if you are moving in the right direction. If you are out here on the red line, this is basically continuous changes. You will do a lot of things, but it might be more of the changes uh, that, that will not necessarily lead you to where you want to be. Inside this corridor, you will find the continuous improvements. Here you will take the steps in the right direction. So the true north is, is key working with Hoshin Kandri and also working with, with, with Lean in general. And just to mention something about breakthroughs. A breakthrough should directly contribute to the business objectives. So when we talk about breakthroughs, it's really about how do we make sure that, that, that we, we 
deliver something that, that the company wants. But it should also be a significant improvement in performance or in business processes. So we are looking for the big steps. We are looking for the things that will move the, the organization quicker than if we just do continuous improvements. And we are looking for things that require the organization to stretch itself. So it should not be done by business as usual. This might be necessary as well, but when we talk about breakthroughs and Hoshin, we are, we are actively looking for the things that actually push the organization, push leaders, push team members to really stretch themselves. This is a way to break the, the, the status quo of an organization to say, we, we, we need to accomplish more. And we often refer those to be midterm. And in these days, with uh, everything moving quicker and quicker, you can, you can argue what is really midterm. But traditionally, it might be two to five years time uh, we are looking to here, but, but this could be very different from organization to organization, what actually is midterm. So this is what we are looking for when we do the breakthroughs, and that will uh, be the, uh, the input for the annual goals that we will set. <laughs> and the key component to actually make sure that people feel committed, that people have clarity and, and there is a consensus is the catchball process. So this, I would say, is a bit in, in the center of the Hoshin Kanvi. And it starts with management. Management starts to set the company Hoshin. They look into uh, the breakthroughs, they look into the owner directives, they look into what's happening in, in the outside world, how, we, how well are we doing compared to our competitors, etc., etc. And based on that, and, and of course the current situation in the organization, and based on that, they set up a number of direction and activities and also targets. And then they start to do the catch ball. And the catch ball is coming from this traditional picture where you have two people. I often see them as a father and a son standing on, on the street, uh, uh, throwing a baseball back and forth, back and forth uh, to, to, to improve all the time. And this is an important part. So we do the catch ball by giving ideas on we what, what we want to achieve, getting feedback on, on, on that, coming back with a final, uh, final targets or, or final uh, direction. And with that, the next level in the organization start their thinking, okay, if this is what the company want to achieve, how can we contribute? What problems do we need to solve? And then they start their uh, thought process. Uh, and when they are starting to, to, to be ready, they, they do their catch ball process with the next level and get feedback and come back with some kind of final idea. And then we are down on team level. And this will, where it will become more of implementation plans or concrete actions, concrete problems to solve. Uh, sometimes you stop the process here, sometimes you go all the way down to the individual. So you might have individual priorities that are iterated through a catchball process between the team and the individual to say, okay, these are the three things I need to achieve this year to contribute to my team's plan, to my department's Hoshin, and then ultimately to the, to the company Hoshin. Uh, and like the arrow here shows, this is the way we can bring strategic thinking and make it something that actually makes sense on an individual level eventually. So the catchball process is the way we do that. And if we look on <coughs> the Hoshin Kanji process or the cycle, uh, it looks something like this, that the Hoshin part 
is something we do before the fiscal year starts or whatever time period you would like to work with. But normally, uh, or quite common is that, that you, you, you follow the fiscal year. So you do the Hoshin part where, where you do the catch ball, working with what should be the plan, what problems should we solve, etc. And then when you have consensus on this, you start to, to work. And here you do the country part, you do the PDCA cycles and you do them on a regular basis. I would say at least every month you follow up, you learn and you think what, what do we need to adjust and then it just continues. So you have this kind of, of ongoing uh, PDCA cycle throughout the year. So it will not come as a surprise at the end of the year how well we did. And then you have basically two bigger PDCA cycles that are quite often on, on a six month uh, period. So the midterm review is a quite important one where you, after six months, do a more thorough review. See, has something changed in, in the environment? Has, ha, has uh, something um, popped up that we need to? to consider, do we need actually to, to do something more, uh, a bigger change with our plan or not? And if we look on, on the Hoshin Kandri or the Kandri part on, on, on an annual cycle, it, it's basically a big PDCA that we run. So this is, I think, the big difference compared to a lot of traditional strategic work is that we have this cycle of learning and evaluation throughout the year. And to become successful with Hoshin Kanri, I think you need to focus process, you need to think about methods, but perhaps most important, think about the behavior. So <clears throat> when we think about the process is to, to have a plan or an idea of how do we involve the whole organization? How do we make strategy not only something for a few people? And also think about how do we want to plan and follow up? What should be uh, actually the formal process of this? How do we want to do the country part? How do we want to do the catch ball? You might also want to, to think about how do we connect this to other processes? And how do we communicate? How do we make sure that people get the right information in the right time, etc.? So this is one part that you need to consider to become successful. The second part is, of course, all these kind of traditional lean methods or like utilizing the PDCA, having A3 communication, uh, working with catchballing, for example, or, or, or problem solving. Uh, Make sure that we have different types of course analysis. It might be the phi y, it might be the uh, fishbone, or or other types of understanding why do we have this situation. Quite often, you also see the X matrix, which is uh, one way to to show how uh, Hoshin Kanri or policy deployment can can look like. Or you might have a, a, a number of other methods that you need to make sure are part of the Hoshin Kanri. But the, I would say the most important part, like when we talk about continuous improvement and lean in general, also with Hoshin Kanri is that this is mainly a philosophy that, that leaders and team members need to embrace and live. So we need to have the will to improve. We need really to see that, that we want to move forward. We need to have this thinking of not what we can achieve, but what we must achieve. It's a big difference there. We want to have the breakthrough thinking. We want to have leaders and team members to actually say, how can I push myself even more? Of course, it should be fact-based. Uh, we should always seek the cause and effect. So, so we actually know that we are doing the right things. And we need to have the courage to experiment. And, and, and this is the link into the Kata thinking, that we need to not only guess and hope for the best, we need to have a very scientific view on how we 
take on the challenges and the problems that we identify in, in the Ho Chi Minh process. Uh, so this is where I will leave you to, to Joachim and he will talk much more about this part from a, a scientific manage, scientific thinking and Hata uh, perspective. So guys, thank you for listening and, and uh, I hope I see you in Malmö, uh, like Dwayne say, June 11 to 12. If you have any questions or want to get in touch with me, you'll find my uh, email address here. Don't hesitate to, to just drop me an, an email. So thank you for your time, guys. Thank you, Frederick. Uh, so good afternoon or good morning, wherever you are, uh, guys. My name is Joachim Bjurstrom. I'm a partner and senior consultant at BTP, um, working with CALA and TWI programs. So my job here is to uh, take that step further uh, or take the ball from, from Frederick uh, and look on the behavioral side of Washington country. Um, and this is actually what Mike Rother wrote about in his book, Teoda Kara, back in 2010, uh, where he started to see that we uh, we were looking at the wrong things from Toyota. We were looking at the visible stuff that they were doing, uh, the 5S, the Kanbans, and the rest of it, uh, and instead look at how are they actually thinking to be able to do all the stuff that they can do. Uh, so the underlying behavior and the, the pattern that Mike saw at different um, uh, Toyota factories, that is actually what uh, Toyota Kara is about. Um, and Toyota Kara um, is it's a practice routine. It's a practice routine for scientific thinking. Uh, it's not a method. It shouldn't be used as a method uh, because then you will miss the point a bit uh, and you won't get the full full effect of your scientific thinking uh, so it's a it's a practice routine um, and they are first and foremost a people patterns uh, we develop people uh, by training them to become better at scientific thinking so that they can actually perform in the Hoshin country Uh, strategy that uh, Fred designed for us. So it's building people who can take on bigger and more demanding challenges ahead of us. That's the end goal of Kara. That is what it is. And there are two two patterns here. Uh, first, we have the improvement Kara, which is then supported and driven by the coaching Kara. Uh, and for you not familiar with kata, uh, the term is taken from martial arts, where kata is a pattern you repeat so often uh, that at the end of the day, that's internalized in your system. So, for instance, in jiu-jitsu or karate, if you're being attacked, you have to think about how to counter counteract that um, that attack. It is just something that you do and that is so ingrained in your body and your system that is just the way you do it. And I think it's important to say that uh, if you go to a Toyota factory, uh, they will not have a clue what you say if you ask for Toyota Kara. Uh, this is Mike's interpretation of what Toyota is doing, uh, where he has decoded a pattern that he can see with some variation in different Toyota, Toyota factories, uh, but it's this the underlying uh, thinking and demanded or asked for behavior uh, that actually drives Toyota in the background. So this is another way of depicting the the Hoshin Kanri. Uh, journey and here we call that the improvement kata and there's four steps in the improvement kata 
uh, first we need to have the direction or challenge uh, and we need to understand that thoroughly so we actually know and understand where we're going and why we're going there the second step is grasping our current condition so where are we so before we start running we need to know where we're going and where we are in the short term then step number three is that we establish our next target condition uh, and we'll get back to what a target condition is um, so in the short term that could be weeks or days um, that brings out obstacles the obstacles are the real gold here because that's the things we need to remove to be able to reach where we need to be uh, they're not improvement ideas randomly selected they are actual needs actual things that we need to get over uh, in order to uh, perform in a different manner um, and then we conduct experiments to overcome our obstacles and how does this become a people pattern well it's because we by doing this by establishing our next target condition in a way that seems difficult to the person or the team that we are coaching and developing uh, we will be pushing their knowledge threshold so this red line here is uh, depicting a knowledge threshold and that is something we all carry around uh, it's a natural instinct we always set up boundaries for what we think is reasonable uh, however uh, what is reasonable uh, might not be enough uh, in our in the view of our customers where they demand quicker better safer uh, cheaper deliveries of whatever that is that we are uh, producing so by pushing people and finding their knowledge threshold and constantly work on moving that further, expanding that knowledge threshold, that is developing people. And that is the whole outcome of working with lean or working with uh, process development is to grow people. Uh, so I think this image here shows uh, that old saying from Toyota that is saying, uh, first we build people, then the people build cars. This is actually the pattern underneath that drives that, um, that to happen. So then we have a coaching card. We have something of a, we have a standard procedure. Um, and the standard procedure needs to be there so it becomes internalized. So we follow actually a, a pocket card um, with a set number of questions. And that is because we want that pattern to uh, to become second nature so the pocket card uh, is something that we need to have as a starter card something we need in the beginning something to hold on to and this the coaching card gives momentum to the learners pdca so if you think back on the the image of uh, frederick's presentation with all those PDCAs that need needs turning, they need to run fast and through the PDCA cycles. The coaching is what drives this. This is where we do catch ball. If we look at the uh, the first uh, question there, what is the target condition? Uh, and as a coach, I can always connect back to what the real challenge is what the breakthroughs are that we are looking for so in in this way by asking the same kind of questions over and over again uh, you will actually on a daily basis be able to do that catch ball uh, in a very smooth way so the coaching color is that procedure that drives the whole country uh, bit of hoshi 
so here we can see that these two these two patterns uh, interact so you have a learner on the, the left side there uh, who is doing the improvement color on a daily basis uh, because what we're after is uh, experiments toward the target condition um, and we want those experiments to be rapid small isolated so we can see cause and effect uh, and then the coach comes in and supports that learner through coaching cycles and uh, where the the pocket card with the, the set questions where that makes most sense is once the job is done by establishing the next target condition understanding the uh, the direction and so on um, so once we're in the experiment mode that's where the the coaching color makes a lot of sense and until you're there you know, the coach is there to set you up for a good good execution of the uh, of the experimentations and getting getting through the the obstacles One insight that we've had uh, over the last years, uh, and this is also part of a, like a deeper knowledge of Hoshin, Hoshin uh, thinking, is that the challenge is often multidimensional. Um, so once we say that a process needs to behave differently, we need to be able to do more with less, which is often the case. We need to do better with what we have. Uh, you automatically get a people challenge because the people uh, that are doing the work in a year from now will need to have a different kind of skill set than they have today or they need to have a different behavior uh, perhaps they need uh, better knowledge so there are things popping out of a process challenge that leads you directly into people uh, so what what do we need what's the current situation with our people and where what do they need to be able to do in the future we can also set target conditions on people there's also systems challenges coming out of a different process uh, there could be financial challenges, uh, there could be market uh, challenges, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we are doing, since Kata is a way of thinking, a pattern that we repeat, we don't change our behavior just because the challenge is regarding people or process or systems. We use the same kind of thinking. So where does, where does the process need to be? Where do the systems need to be? Where do the people need to be? Uh, and where are we now and what's our first target condition in each of these different uh, topics and here we can see that there's there's a need for breakthrough thinking in each of the, the different areas uh, and I like the Albert Einstein's the definition of insanity is to do something over and over again expecting a different result uh, so in each of these areas we need to do something different otherwise that breakthrough or that uh, new level of performance is not going to happen so just some simple examples and these are uh, basically turned inwards these are usually what we talk about in a lean method or lean uh, related uh, setting so if we talk about our people uh, what could be a breakthrough thing with our people well if we actually train people better on the jobs perhaps the processes will be more stable if we haven't trained our people before uh, in a proper way um, we are getting unstable processes so the breakthrough thin idea here would be to train people on the better on the jobs 
If we look at the process, perhaps if we use a solid method to break down the jobs and try to eliminate or combine or simplify, uh, perhaps we can improve safety, productivity and quality all at the same time. And remember, uh, we always set up the ideas, the breakthrough ideas, they are always hypotheses. We don't know, but we can, based on the facts we have and the knowledge we have, uh, we can see that uh, thinking differently will take us somewhere else than we are right now. That is what we use a lot of the, the lean tools to, to do as well. For systems, we could also look at management and say if we train leaders how to keep good relations with their people, perhaps we will have less conflicts and retention problems. And finally, financially, if we change our process from a push to a pull system, perhaps our working capital will go down dramatically. Uh, I have a case right now where I'm working with a customer where when we pulled out the, uh, the multi-dimensional challenges and uh, broke down that challenge into something that uh, uh, in each different area, uh, we could actually find a, a potential of 3 million euros per year in cost savings. Uh, so by looking at uh, challenges in different views and spend time on doing that, there's a dramatic and really cool effect uh, that you can see. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into the improvement card and the last, uh, the last steps here, uh, grasping current condition and next target condition uh, we won't go into detail on the experiments though this time, uh, just because uh, the setting is not uh, good enough for that. Um, so the, let's look at it from a helicopter view a little bit more. So if we say that the the, tar uh, the challenge is multidimensional, that means also that the current condition is multidimensional. Uh, so when we look at current condition, uh, basically going out to Gemba and see what, what is going on. Uh, it means that we have to translate what we see uh, into some kind of fundamental understanding of what the system is like. Uh, what are the ideas that people are uh, have built this process or this workplace on? Uh, can we understand the culture below the surface? And finally, how our process is working. If we just look at how processes are working and we miss the, the, uh, the first three ones here, uh, we will risk of doing short-term improvements um, that will not be solid or uh, stable over time. But if we understand how people think and the idea behind it, you can start challenging uh, in a way that will give uh, substantial uh, effect. So a target condition then uh, is, we usually say it's a need by when. So in a certain time period, weeks, days, um, not more than a month or two, we need to be able to perform in a special way. And it's something that we can do. Uh, we usually ask ourselves the questions, can we film it? Can I come back and film what we're doing? So a target condition is never a just a number. A number is an outcome of how we work. The target condition is a description of how do we actually work uh, to get a different result. So it's an ability to do something different from today and it has to be meaningful to those working there. Uh, 
And a lot of times, it's always difficult to see into the future, but a lot of times when you hit the right thing, uh, the right topic to work on, uh, people will be fantastic if we can do that. That would be great if I can do this. Um, then you know you're on the right way of establishing a target condition that is meaningful to those working there. We mean that people strive better than they problem solve. Uh, that might sound a bit counterintuitive in a lean world and what Frederick said before. Uh, but by establishing or finding what we need to improve instead of what, of what we can improve, we will become more, uh, we will use our resources a lot better than if we try to figure out all the dots in this image here, uh, which could represent all the ways that we have in our process. But if we find just the, the vital few things that we need to improve, we will spend resources better uh, and it will take us further down the line. And a lot of these different wastes uh, potentially will go away in that process. Uh, so finding that uh, that condition to strive for will also engage your people in a much better way because it makes more sense to them. So coming back to the big big picture, um, so we have the Hosh and Canary process, and we have the improvement card driven and supported by the coaching card. Uh, should I choose one of these? Or is it actually that I need to do both? Because the Hosh and Canary process, and that is a, a process and a system uh, which then contains scientific thinking. So coming back to that, uh, Kata is not a method, it's a practice routine or training camp uh, to be able to perform the Hosh and Canary process. So it's a fundamental uh, ability or skill that is necessary to drive the Hosh and Canary process. Uh, and we are, by definition, not very good as humans on scientific thinking. We need a lot of practice to do that. We are not trained enough. We don't have it in our culture uh, to be scientific thinkers. Uh, so it needs a lot of practice. But if you pull these two together with a solid uh, Hoshin Canary process, so you need where uh, you know where you need to be. You need you know what you need to achieve as breakthroughs, and then by practicing the scientific thinking, filling that with all the ability and all the skill of the people, that will give this uh, a major boost forward. So that is how we think these two uh, work together. And we hope you uh, can see the benefit of doing this. Coming back to Frederick's uh, picture of how do we create competitiveness with increasing output uh, without adding resources? And how we can add value by Kaizen mindset. So combining these two, Hoshin Kanri and Kara, will build that green, green box there uh, into something that you, your organization will uh, benefit a lot from, that's our firm belief. So thank you much and so much for listening. Uh, I also hope to see you in Malmo, of course. Uh, it's going to be a great event. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please drop me or Frederick an email at these uh, addresses. Uh, if you want to find more information about us you can find that at btp.dk and most of all uh, thank you for listening and stopping by today thank you hey yo Joachim, thank you very much uh both to you and uh frederick for uh, your, your thought leadership 
uh, and sharing some of your personal knowledge with us today. Really appreciate that. But also thank you uh, to the organization Business Through People for, for really spearheading and driving uh, some of the thought leadership in the areas of TWI, CADA, uh, human resources, and just general people development. So th thank you much for that. Um, and, and thank you, Dwayne, uh, for, uh, for hosting this event uh, from Lean Frontiers. Yeah, quite, quite welcome. And as uh, both Frederick and Joachim uh, mentioned, please do join us for the TWI and CADA Summit Europe. Uh, there's no question you'll find this to be one of the most unique events that you can find in this area. Uh, there are TWI, uh, ways to learn TWI out there. There's ways to learn CADA, but there is no place where you find such a uh, focus on the integration of both of these as well as them standing alone. So please come and join us and you'll hear from companies who are actively engaged in TWI, CADA, and then this integration of both. Uh, and you'll meet many of the thought leaders in this space as well. Um, so that event, as uh, mentioned, takes place uh, the 11th and 12th of June in Malmo, Sweden, which again is just across the water from Copenhagen. So you can learn more about that by visiting twiandkatasummit.eu. Thanks again to everyone who participated in today's session, whether live or on demand. And uh, please look for an email from us shortly with a link to the recording. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.